Hey Rebecca, I'm um, just going to try to go through these trig problems and uh, not exactly sure how I'm going to attack each one but we'll just see what happens as we go. All right, I think here I'm going to try to, uh, this is the first problem, I'm going to try to get a common denominator uh, and uh, combine the two fractions into one fraction. So I'm going to multiply these with denominators by each other. And whatever I do on the top, I mean on the bottom, then I need to do also on the top. So that I don't actually change the values of the fraction. Alright, so on top here I get, let's see, I get that. Plus, I'm gonna go ahead and add it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it all in, over the top of one fraction. So that's gonna be cosine cosecant x x. And uh, if I distribute this, I get on the bottom cosecant x cosecant squared x minus cosecant x plus cosecant x minus 1, those cancel, so I get cosecant squared x minus 1 on the bottom, and uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so, you know, when we have this, this cosecant times cosine, that's the same thing as cosine times 1 over sine, which turns into cosine over sine, which turns into tan, sorry, cotan. So let's see then. So that turns into cotan x plus cotan x. And then the minus cosine and plus cosine cancel. So uh, that gives me actually two cotangent x over. And cosecant squared x minus one, I think that's a trig identity, a Pythagorean identity. Yes, it is a Pythagorean identity. Uh, I always have trouble remembering these last two. I always remember the first one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, but. These last two, I don't always remember those perfectly. 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared, and tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So cotan squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. Let me write that down. Cotan squared plus 1. That's not usually how I remember it. I think I remember that. It was 1 plus cotan squared equals cosecant squared. So if I rearrange that, move the one over, then cotan squared equals cosecant squared minus one. So this can just be replaced by cotan squared. So that gives me two cotangent x over cotangent squared x. And then this cotangent x on top can cancel with one of these cotangents on the bottom. So then it becomes two over cotangent x. And remember that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent on the bottom can just change to a tangent on top. So this becomes then 2 tan x on the left hand side equals 2 tan x on the right hand side. And that should be good enough to prove that answer. All right, the second one uh, was actually written. So when I, when I read my text, it's forwarded to me from you, I think. It says uh, it says this, which has to be a misprint. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to say cosine, like COS, or cosecant CSC. So it's got to be one or the other. So I'm going to guess it's probably CSC looking at the problem. It's probably this, 1 over cosecant squared x plus 1 over secant squared x equals 1. And if that's the case, it actually makes it, I think, pretty easy. Because cosecant is the same, is the reciprocal 
of sine and secant is reciprocal of cosine. So this can just come to the top as a sine squared and this can just come to the top as a cosine squared. So it just becomes sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 and that's a Pythagorean identity. So that's already proven or you could just say sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 so 1 equals 1 if you have to take it that far. Alright, as I'm looking at this third problem, I'm kind of thinking about several different ways to do it. I um, think what I'm going to try first is just cross multiplying. Just if I cross multiply here, cross the equal sign, then let's see what happens. So I got 1 minus cosine x times secant x plus 1 equals 1 plus cosine x times secant x minus 1. And so let's just see what happens if we distribute here. So we get, if we distribute, we get secant x plus 1 minus cosine x secant x minus cosine x. So I'm just doing the full method there. Um, and here I get secant x minus 1 plus cosine x secant x minus cosine x. Um, so we don't quite have an identity yet. So let's see, what is secant? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which makes these guys cancel each other, and it just becomes 1, because this is like cosine times 1 over cosine, so those cancel, it just becomes 1. And the same thing happens here, and this just becomes uh, 1 also. So then this becomes 1 minus 1 which cancels. So this I'm left with secant x minus cosine x equals, and this is negative 1 plus 1, which also cancels. So that's also going to become secant x minus cosine x, and we have proven our identity. Okay, on the fourth problem here, um, not immediately, again, it doesn't immediately stand out what to do, but when you don't know what to do, just start trying stuff. Just start, just start combining things. Just uh, do something if it's wrong, as my dad would say. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make co cotangent be cosine over sine. And then I'm going to try to combine these two uh, fractions into one single fraction and then see what happens. Stuff might cancel out. So let's just see what happens. If I multiply each denominator by the other, and I'm, I may be doing this all wrong, we'll see. If I do, we'll go back and start over and try a different approach. So we're going to try this first. 1 plus cosine x. Do the same thing to the top as I do to the bottom. So as not to actually change the value of the fraction. And here I'm multiplying by sine x on bottom and top. Okay, what's that do for me? That gets me a single fraction on, and, and I, I'm going to get cosine x plus cosine squared x and that top left fraction is going to be plus sine squared x from the top right fraction over uh, sine x plus cosine x. Nope, no, no, that's not what I meant to write. Sine x plus sine x cosine x. That's just distributing here, okay? And I get the same thing when I do when I distribute here as well. So that's why I'm just writing it once. So it's this it's all one fraction now. So I'm just working on the left hand side. I'm seeing what happens. 
uh, what happens now is I have a Pythagorean identity right here that's going to just become a 1. So now I have cosine x plus 1 over, and on the bottom, on the bottom, what do I want to do? What do I want to do on bottom right there? I think I want to factor out a sine x as the GCF. If I find, factor out a sine x, it leaves me with 1 plus cosine x. And now look what I have. I have cosine x plus 1 and 1 plus cosine x, which is actually the same thing. They cancel each other out. And so now that leaves me with, I'm just going to kind of come back up here, 1 over sine x equals cosine x. And from here, um, I am now suspicious about this problem in general because 1 over sine does not equal cosine. So I'm suspicious about this problem. I am thinking there may have been a mistype or a misprint uh, that cos it would be right if this at the very beginning had been cosecant instead of cosine. So then we would actually be done and it would be correct. But the way it's written, I do, do not believe it's possible. And it's not an identity. So if it were um, if, if it were cosecant x instead of cosine x then we would be then then it would be a good problem so now cosecant because one over sine is cosecant and now we have an identity so check that and make sure it's copied correctly um, and uh, let me know what you find out